Okay, uh, welcome back. So now we've moved on to just, this is the last type of factor theorem question you can get. Uh, it's probably the hardest one as well. It's not, it's just a bit abstract. It's a bit different because we're dealing with all letters and no numbers. That's what we call it, uh, problems with all letters. Um, we would recommend going over the videos of unknown coefficients. So that's actually uh, later, it's going to be after this video. So maybe watch that video first and then this one will make more sense just, the, just at the end. But uh, yeah, we're just going to jump straight into it. So the question is, x squared plus ax minus b is a factor of this cubic uh, equation here, okay? So we need to show that a is equal to minus 2b minus 6 over b. So it doesn't really matter what it says here. We're just going to do the same method every single time. And then hopefully at the end, it will be the same as this. So we needn't worry about this until the very end, okay? Um, so we're going to go straight ahead and we're going to divide this by this using long division. Uh, blue. Okay. So I'm going to say x squared plus ax minus b. Divide that into x cubed minus 2bx squared plus ax minus 6. Yep. Okay. So let's just go straight into it. x squared into x cubed is going to give us x. Multiply x by each term here. We're going to get x cubed plus ax squared minus bx. Okay, so instantly you have a problem. It's not like, um, well, I'll change the signs first, but it's not quite like um, minus plus and, no, oh, sorry, that should be a minus. And that should be a plus, okay, sorry. So it's not quite like numbers where you can just take 3x squared from 1x squared or 2x squared, whatever it is. You have a's and b's and stuff like this. So I'm gonna go with, actually, no, I'm gonna go with red. Okay, so these are gonna cancel anyway. That's the first thing we're gonna look at. This here, what you actually do is you group the x squared terms together. So you're gonna write x squared here, and you're almost gonna, it's almost like factorizing it. So in here, you're gonna have minus 2b and minus a. Okay, because since you can't take minus 2bx squared from minus ax squared because they're different terms, you're just going to factorize them like this, group them both together. And now you technically have one number. It's just easier to deal with instead of having loads and loads of numbers. We're going to do the exact same thing here. Here we're going to have, I'm going to say plus, and it's going to be a plus b by x. Okay, yeah, because x and x is a similar term here, but a and b are different, so we're going to put those in the bracket like that. I'm going to bring the minus 6 down. We're going to be left with minus 6. And then we're going to do the same thing again. You're going to have x squared divided into this term here. And we'll do this in pink. Is going to be... I'm going to write plus minus 2b minus a. So really it's going to be minus 2b minus a, but it's just x squared into that is going to give us plus that. It's just an easier way to look at it for now. Um, and then we're going to multiply minus 2b minus a and keep it in the brackets by each term here. So this is again where it gets uh, a little bit confusing. So minus 2b minus a x squared is this by this. Now minus 2b minus a by a x squared. This is going to be uh, um, minus 2b a x. Okay, so that's a minus 2b by x. And then minus a by a x squared is, or by a x is going to be minus a squared x okay because a by a is going to be a squared it's going to be minus because there's one minus here and then x is still x and then the last one then we have minus 2b by minus b is going to be plus 2b squared because b by b is going to be b squared and minus a by minus b is going to be plus a b okay so this whoop, sorry that's squiggly line should be straight sort of disastrous looking thing um, hopefully it won't end up too badly, and I don't think it actually, I don't think it will end up uh, too bad at all. But we'll, we'll go through it anyway, so, so it's the exact same as normal long division, you're going to change all the signs. It's going to be plus, it's going to be plus, that's going to be minus, that's going to be minus, okay? 
this will cancel and everything here the, some of them might cancel with something else but right now we're just going to write them all out basically again instead of on top of each other like this we're just going to write them all out in one line and then we can look if anything is plus and minus and we can get rid of them okay so plus a plus bx minus 6 plus 2bax which is this term here plus a squared x Give me 2b squared. So that should be minus 2b squared. And fix that a little bit. Won't be perfect. Yeah, as good as. Minus a b. Okay, so this is a little bit messy. I'm just gonna write it out one more time. Um, down here, so don't worry, I'm going to go through all this again at the end of the video uh, if you're a little bit lost, that is a little bit confusing um, write this out one more time that's not what I said um, yeah a plus bx minus no, what I'm going to do, okay, I'm going to write it all out again but I'm going to write all the x's on one side and all the non-x's on the other side, okay so it's going to be plus 2bax, which is this term here, and plus a squared x. Okay, there are all the x's, and then everything else is non x. Start with the minus 6, uh, and then we're going to have minus 2b squared and minus ab. Okay, um, now this is what we call the remainder because we divided x squared plus ax minus b into this here. Okay, so the remainder is left at the bottom, and we know that if if x squared plus ax minus b is a factor of this thing here, the remainder should be zero, like we would have seen in most of our other examples. So we go back to the top. We know that x squared plus ax minus b is a factor of this, therefore this has to be equal zero. Okay, so obviously we can't tell if it's zero or not because there's a's and b's. But if we found the value of a and b, we'd find out that this would they'd all cancel each other out and we'd be left with zero. Okay, so I'm gonna write is equal to zero here. So now this is an interesting thing, and this is comes from um, algebraic identities. Like I said, if you look in the other video, it should be clear. This is actually gonna be equal to zero x plus zero. So basically all the x's should be equal to zero and all the non-x's should be equal to zero. So we're just going to take the non-x's because they look like they'd be easier to deal with. Okay, so that has to be equal to zero and all of this has to be equal to zero. So we're going to look at this now anyway. Uh, and again, I'll just change color again. So we have minus 6 minus 2b squared minus ab is equal to zero. Uh, and we want, at the top, now we're going to look at the thing we want, a is equal to minus 2b minus 6 over b. So we want a on one side, isolate a, and put all the b's on the other side. So that's what I'm going to do. We're going to have minus ab is equal to 2b squared plus 6. And I'm going to divide across by minus b. By minus b minus b and minus b and this will give us so the b's here will cancel and so all the minus will be left with and the answer I'm gonna write in pink so one last color change a should be equal to so minus 2b squared divided by minus b is gonna give us minus 2b and plus 6 divided by minus b is gonna be minus 6 over b so a is equal to minus 2b minus 6 over b which is what we are looking for. Perfect. Okay, it all worked out. So I'm going to go through it one more time, like I said, and hopefully that will all make sense. So basically, the, the idea with this is that you have to learn this method off. It's not, if you do find it a little bit difficult, just practice, practice, practice. You'll learn the, these little tricks off, and you'll be able to do it in the exam, even if you don't understand it completely, which isn't obviously ideal. We would much prefer, and we'd recommend that you try to understand it, but uh, it is something you can just kind of learn off by heart. Okay, so we'll go through one more time. 
uh, we know that x squared plus ax minus b is a factor of this and we're, we're going to use that information to show that a is equal to minus 2b minus 6 over b so we never actually find out what the values of a and b are uh, it doesn't matter in this question okay so what we're going to do is we're going to use long division to divide this the x squared so the quadratic into the cubic okay so we did that here x squared into x cubed uh, I'm not going to go through every single step. I think the steps we're going to go through are just these ones here. So adding and subtracting the A's and the B's, which are the more, more difficult ones. So it's the um, handy enough little long division first. So we would have seen that in the other videos. Uh, and it's just this bit here, I think, is the trickiest bit, okay? So we treat it as any other long division question. We're going to change the signs and everything. And it's just when we're adding them that we see the problem that we can't add or we can't subtract minus 2B and minus a because they're they're separate terms so what you always do is you group them into the same term here so you basically put the brackets around x squared and you group them so you, you don't have to do that you can write them both out singularly you can just write minus 2b x squared minus a x squared but you're just going to run out of space is the thing so i already i kind of did run out of space and i was putting some of them in the brackets so whichever way you feel comfortable but if you can do this it does really help it just saves a little bit of space if not just write them all out okay and you'll get one big long thing like this and that's absolutely fine you can write that all out and then at the end so once you have your remainder okay you're gonna have a one big long term in all a's b's x's you're gonna let that equal to zero and then you're gonna remember that it should be equal to zero x plus zero so all of the x's should be equal to zero and all of the non x so the constants should be equal to zero. So you use one of those pieces of information, whichever one looks easier, to prove what you had at the start. Okay, so it's quite a long video, but I hope it did make sense. Um, watch it again, and like I said, it's quite similar every single year, or every single question is the same. It's the same method you just have to learn off. So I hope this helped, and yeah.